when I was growing up, um, firstly I was actually born with a neurological disability, um, which is quite disconcerting because it means that um, it's kind of like having a psychotic disposition. So like I see like static like particles everywhere and they make patterns, but also like it it also is, is linked, well it also means that I experience something called depersonalization, which is when you're out of your body. Um, and um, those issues were kind of exacerbated when I was growing up in a really, um, my family context was quite violent. Um, and it meant that I witnessed like domestic abuse for a long time, but also went through psychological abuse as well. Because my kind of expect expectations of how men should behave was set at such a low standard, um, it meant that I was vulnerable to further abuse, basically. Um, and this meant that I experienced, when in my teens, two very serious instances of sexual violence. Um, and this basically meant that I had a few psychotic episodes. Um, and obviously, I realised that in re on reflection, you know, I didn't realise it at the time. In terms of coping mechanisms, um, what I did was learn a lot about mental health and then I also learned a lot about gender inequality and sexual violence and sexual imbalance and what that actually means. Um, and so it helped me understand my mind and society and myself as well as people around me as well. Um, so I can learn how to forgive through that knowledge basically. Um, and so that's like a massive part of the healing process. I just communicate about my reality to other people, my close friends and like people around me, then they know if I, why I'm acting in an eccentric or like surprising way to certain things. What is really important for me is like trying to challenge the stigma around talking about sexual violence and talking about mental health. Because um, I've really struggled with that. Um, in the past and like it's just it's kind of like a matter of fact thing one one way that I've coped with it and also kind of helped others through my experiences is by working with projects like mind um, who talk about mental health and projects like with women in prison who support women who've, who've been through incarceration um, and also I'm um, with a project called fearless futures who educate young girls on um, gender inequality basically and they're the first organisation that does that. Other ways that I've managed to cope myself has I've kept a blog for the past three years um, and I basically like wrote all my emotions down my feelings and like and it kind of merged itself into like poetry and like kind of like spoken word pieces. What my experiences and the volunteer work that I do really emphasises how important women's centres are, um, how important rape crisis centres are, uh, how they're fundamental to any sort of expert advice on all these things that like so many women go through. Sex and sexual imbalance is like at the centre of so much inequality um, and if you teach about gender like full stop you start to learn all the identities and categories that we place people into. If I say I've been sexually abused, like the whole stereotype of like a pure woman is disrupted, which is why I feel shame about it. And that's a completely ridiculous Christian, like old school idea that should not apply. But it does because these ideas are like way more like um, permanent than we think they are, you know. I'm Nadia Violet and um, I'm colourful, complex and sensitive. <laughs>